Welcome to The Real Board Loft. I'm Trip Foreman and this is the Werner Mini Simmons. Um, we just want to get one thing, actually we're going to get two things out of the way uh, at the very beginning of this video just so that nobody has any holdups like for the rest of the video. One, it is true, this board is ugly. It's okay to say it's ugly. Um, when you're going as fast as you're going to be going on this board, you'll get over that. Trust me on that one. Uh, the other one is that we are not going to talk about planning hall theory and we are not going to talk about naval architecture for the entire length of this video. So if any of you were about to throw up in your mouth, you don't have to worry about that now. No naval architecture and no planning hall theory. Um, what we want to share with you is just uh, basically session reports on this board and uh, what it's done uh, here in Cape Hatteras uh, and a lot of other ways obviously around the world, but for us here in Cape Hatteras and uh, you know how this thing performs. Uh, this board, uh, Basically, you'd put it in the, the same category as uh, the Grobblers, like a lost couch potato or a firewire sweet potato, uh, and a lost RV, something along those lines. Uh, but it is different than those boards uh, in a couple different ways. Uh, the board, the Mini Simmons name, or just like the whole Mini Simmons uh, genre of boards, comes from the retro uh, Simmons boards, uh, which tend to be very, very flat, uh, thick rail boards and twin keel fins. And while those boards, you know, they've got a, a retro, obviously a retro look to them, uh, they have very little performance characteristics in the boards. So when David Werner went out to shape a, uh, a Mini Simmons, he wanted to have his own twist on it. So he wanted to have it be a modernized performance Mini Simmons and kind of harvest what was good out of that board for getting you into the wave and get you going fast, but then add a lot of performance into it as well. So how is this board different than the, the retro Simmons? Um, for one, it's thinner. Throughout, it has a little bit more rocker than your standard uh, Simmons board. And then also, while it does have a little bit of belly here, underneath your front foot and your chest, uh, it goes to, rather than going to a single concave out the back or flat or V out the back, it goes to a double concave in the back of the board and then to a V uh, in the tail. And then looking at the tail section, uh, instead of having keel fins, there's twin keels, it has the future controllers. Uh, and we've had a lot of good results with these uh, fins and other gravel type boards, especially when you pair them up with a really wide tail. So the performance of this board, how does it surf? Um, this board catches waves incredibly well. Uh, one, because it does have a flatter rocker compared to like a short board. Uh, the wider nose helps. Uh, a big thing with catching these waves is the amount of area in the tail. And that's something that you wouldn't really think would work to help you catch waves. But all of this width, like the tail on this board at 12 inches off the tail is like 17 and 3 quarter inches wide and it's got a huge tail block right here. So all of this width is under your thighs. It's under the back of, of your body. And so rather than your thighs sinking and you plowing through the water when you're planing, you're actually planing dead flat in the water, which is the most efficient way to paddle. And then also the wave catches this wide tail and basically tosses you into the wave as well. So having this area underneath like this section of your body right here when you're paddling and then also having this big tail block just to push you into the wave with the power of the wave uh, makes it a lot easier to catch waves. Like when you go out on this board, you basically have to try to miss waves and you catch a lot of waves that you basically didn't think you were gonna catch. You could sit in the same area as the longboarders and pick off waves that you would not catch on, on basically any other board uh, in the loft. So a really good board for catching waves. Um, if you catch waves and then you get into them and the board's stiff, like what's, what's the point? You're basically riding a long board at that point. So this board has a, uh, it has a very loose, uh, slippery feel through the water. A lot of the, a lot of the grovelers are real uh, thick on the rails and, and edgy. Uh, so they're good for pumping speed and they're good for bigger cars, but you really can't get as loose on them. And so by having this rolled rail, like you can see that the board has a, a upturned rail almost all the way back to the midsection, and then it goes too sharp. This really loosens the board up with the belly because it just rolls off of that belly and the rail keeps the board real loose. It also helps it hold into and not catch and trip. And uh, if you get into, if you're uh, going from a flat section into a steeper section, it'll hold into the wave better and not trip and catch. Uh, the double concave allows the board with that with that big spine in the middle right here allows the board to basically be broken up into two halves and and to roll easy easier uh rail to rail and not catch if you had a single concave or it was flat it would just feel wide and boaty uh that really loosens the board up uh so the sensation that you get is is you 
get into the wave incredibly early and then you have a good amount of uh, speed going down the line uh, and especially off that first pump or two and the wave and part of that is because they have this I-beam, they call it the I-beam suspension system which is two carbon strips right here and so everybody's thinking about the board bending and releasing, bending and releasing but you also get twist or torsional flex in the board and by having these carbon strips in here that loads the board and springs it out of your bottom turn and then also springs it coming around through your roundhouses faster so there's a lot more energy that's captured and then released uh, in the board when you're surfing it. On the deck of the board, um, looking at the, the construction of the board, the board itself is Marco foam, it's 1.9 pound Marco foam, it's an EPS blank, fuse cell EPS blank with epoxy resin. Uh, six ounce cloth on the bottom of the board, uh, six ounce plus four ounce on the deck. So it's really sturdily built, but still light. Like most boards are, uh, most polyester boards are four plus four on the deck and single four on the bottom. This is uh, four plus six on the deck and six on the bottom and still lighter because of that blank and because of the epoxy resin. And then they do a vector, uh, vector mesh tail patch on the back as well, just to reinforce uh, the tail area of the board. So. Uh, again, like the feeling of this board, uh, you catch a lot of waves, you go incredibly fast uh, down the line in, in very average to complete junk surf. Um, if you do get a hollow section of the wave, it will still hold in the wave. And it, I mean, it just makes a, a good time out of a bad time is the, is the bottom line. So if you want to feel like what it, if you want to feel what it feels like to go about 78 miles an hour on a one foot wave, this is definitely a board uh, that you should check out. So the Werner Mini Simmons, we have them here at Real, uh, all the sizes. If you have any questions, just give us a call uh, or post your comments below. Thanks a lot for watching the video.